So you want to get started on YouTube or you have already gotten started on YouTube and you want some tips on how to get better. Well, as I was laying down in the bed last night, I was thinking about all the people who may want to get started on YouTube in 2021, but simply won't because they think it's too much competition. It's overly saturated, yada, yada, yada. And I wanted to make this video for those few people that actually want to take the initiative to get started. And these tips will hopefully put you in the best possible position to be successful going into 2021 with your YouTube channel. So if you stick around to the end of this video, I got a ton of good tips and tricks that help you be more successful on your YouTube channel as a beginner and hopefully you'll find some kind of value in this video. What's up guys, my name is Anthony McLemore and welcome back to the channel. Before we get started in this video, I wanna ask you if you think you will find any kind of value in this video, then go ahead and smash the like button for you boy as it really does help my channel out personally. And with that being said, I wanna quickly talk about what led me to get started on my own YouTube journey. So when I first got started on YouTube, it definitely wasn't about making a ton of money or being famous or anything like that. My goal when I got started on YouTube was to have a voice. What I wanted to do more than ever was to be a resource that people could go to for reliable information and helpful tips and i think that the reason why i wanted this so badly was because as a college basketball player i had no voice at all because the ncaa would literally regulate every single thing you could say you couldn't promote anything you couldn't put your name on anything you were kind of like a slave to the ncaa now i don't want to get into the argument too much because there are a ton of benefits with playing basketball on a power five basketball team but one of the main things that i lost was my ability to create content and my ability to have a voice in general in a social media platform but now that i have my Small channel i am able to broadcast my voice almost as freely as i want there are still some limitations because of the corporation i work for now but let's not get into that what we can get into is the first tip on how to get started on youtube going into 2021 and what i would say for that is that you absolutely need to have a goal sheet in mind i believe that having a goal sheet can motivate you to points beyond your furthest imagination when i first got started on youtube my only goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers but the only caveat is that once i got to 1,000 subscribers i lost a little bit of motivation because i was like okay what's next 10,000? that's so far away it took me months to get to 1,000 how long is it gonna take me to get to 10,000 but that was the wrong mindset to have and recently what I've been focusing on with my own goals is the process so when you are creating a goal sheet for getting started on YouTube in 2021 focus on the process and not the end result what do I mean by this don't focus on getting to 1,000 subscribers 10,000 subscribers or the infamous 4,000 watch hours focus on making high quality videos shift your mindset from saying I want 100 subscribers to I want to make eight high quality videos every single month because I promise you if you focus on the process process of making eight high quality videos the subscribers will come the followers will come the audience will come but you can't focus too much on the end result and leave the process out of mind and with that now that you have your goal sheet you must know the expectations when you're getting started on YouTube YouTube is not all fun and games it is exactly like taking on a part-time job except you are working for free you probably won't get a penny for your time for at least a year of creating content now I'm not trying to be pessimistic I'm just trying to be realistic because in order to grow on YouTube you have to have content on your page and it takes a while for you to build up your page full of great content so when you are creating your goal sheet also create an expectation sheet as well ask yourself how often do you want to record how often do you want to edit how often do you want to post and be a little bit realistic with this as well because i know at the beginning when you're so optimistic you may think okay i want to post every single day for the first 365 days or i want to post five videos a week for the first 10 weeks of the channel and honestly you could do this but at what cost would you be doing it you don't want to be living your personal life miserably just to be uploading more content on youtube so my biggest recommendation is to find a balance in your life to where you can upload content consistently and also be happy and be as productive in the rest of the part of your life as well so let's say you already created your goal sheet and you know how often you want to upload the next part of course is what kind of equipment would you need to get started now i'm going to be completely honest here i bought a ton of equipment that i did not even end up using when I was first getting started on my YouTube channel. I bought studio lights, I bought ring lights, I bought tripods, I bought sound foam, I bought a microphone. But these are the things that you don't need when you're first getting started on your channel. The only thing that you really need is a good microphone and a decent quality camera. Speaking of cameras, you don't need a DSLR when getting started, especially if you have one of these bad boys in your pocket. And that is because you don't need to be shelling out a ton of money on expensive cameras when the camera on your iPhone is pretty much movie quality already. These phones have advanced so much in recent years that you pretty much can't even tell the difference when somebody's shooting with an iPhone versus an expensive DSLR. Now for me personally, I am using a DSLR, but it's definitely not an expensive one. I bought a Canon Rebel T5i, which is what I'm using to record on now. It costs about $250 and I bought it at the tail end of 2016. It's pretty much one of the cheapest aftermarket cameras you can buy. And the only reason why I use it to record is because the picture looks great and I can record my face while I'm also screen recording my phone at the same time. However, if I did not have this DSLR, I definitely would be using my iPhone and I'm pretty sure that wouldn't be a ton of difference there. Now, the next thing I talk about is probably the most important when you're making your YouTube videos, and that is having a good, crisp 
audio. Now, audio is the number one thing that can turn a person off from your videos. If you have decent audio, no matter if your video quality absolutely sucks, you have a better chance of that person staying on that video and watching a little bit more of than if the audio sound like metal scraping together or a cat scratching on the wall. Because bad audio may be the most irritating thing a person can experience on YouTube, and it is a surefire way to get someone to click off your video if you don't have a good source of audio. So what I'm using for my audio is a Blue Yeti microphone. I believe I bought it on eBay for about $80, and it is awesome for the way I record my videos, which is just at a desk and sitting here in front of a camera. Now, if you are a person who vlogs a lot more and want to do more recording on the go, then I would absolutely recommend you get a shotgun microphone. One of the ones I'm looking at buying in the near future is a Rode shotgun mic or pretty much any microphone that can plug to the top of your camera and provide a directional audio for your viewers. Now, the reason why I don't have a Rode microphone now is because the cheap DSLR that I bought doesn't support one. It doesn't even have a headphone jack, which is one of the disadvantages of this camera. But moving forward to any other equipment that you need, you definitely don't need any expensive ring lights. The ring light that I use personally costs about $15 from Walmart. I also have some of these studio lights that I bought on eBay, but I absolutely don't need them because the ring light provides some good omnidirectional light from the camera. But I still turn them on anyway just to provide some white light all around my face here. And pretty much everything else that I'm going to mention is just discretionary. You don't need these things at all. But the next thing I bought was these sound foam panels simply because I didn't too much like the way the cream color wall looked in my video. So I decided to change it. And I also bought this lightning LED light to give me some backlight. But at the end of the day, the best thing I can recommend when you're first getting started on YouTube is just finding a place where you're comfortable filming at. Whether it's outside in a spare bedroom or in a bathroom, just find somewhere where you can feel comfortable talking to a camera and being able to let your personality shine. When I first got started on my YouTube channel, I was filming in my living room and you can legit see everything in the background from the couch to clothes to my fiance walking in sometimes. But that was just the process of me getting started on YouTube and I was learning how to make my content better at the time. Now that you know that you don't need a ton of expensive equipment, what you would need to do next when getting started on YouTube going into 2021 is to pick a niche. Now your niche is basically a category that you want your channel to be focused on. Whether it's sports reaction videos, whether it's comedy, financial related videos, I see a lot of real estate channels now and also entrepreneurs Neural channels like mine, just find an area where you are passionate about making content and focus on that niche so that you can be able to rank in a YouTube search algorithm. Now, there's two things that I said in the last sentence that are extremely important. You want to be making content that you are passionate about. That is because once that first burst of motivation that you had when you first got started on YouTube leaves, you will find yourself asking, is it really worth making content anymore? And if you are making content that you are passionate about, the answer would be yes. But if you're making content just to get monetized and just to get views, then you will find yourself soon burnt out than you will like and eventually end up giving up on your channel. Then the next thing I said in the earlier sentence was the search algorithm. When you consistently make content about a specific topic, your videos will slowly begin to rank up in the search algorithm and allow you to get your channel noticed. So even though you will start off really small, even though you'll start off with nobody seeing your channel at all in the first place, for the first probably 12 to 24 months, the more content that you make, the better chance you will have of being able to get noticed and being able to gain organic subscribers in that way. But the last tip I have for you in order to get started on YouTube in 2021 is to just do it. I can guarantee you that about 99% of YouTubers, when they first got started, their videos suck. There is basically no way around it. When you first get started on YouTube, you will make bad videos. Your first 50 videos will be terrible. I haven't even made 50 videos for myself yet, and I know that some of them are terrible. This one's probably terrible. But the thing is, is that you should use your first 50 videos in order to get better at creating content. You should use your first 50 videos to learn as much as you can. You should use your first 50 videos to find your passion and figure out if this is really a career path that you want to take. And at the same time, you should use your first 50 videos in order to express your personality and give people a reason to subscribe to you. Each video will take a long time to make, don't get me wrong. You can put anywhere from three to five hours into any particular video. And if you're taking a long time to edit, even 10 hours some days. So 50 videos may be a daunting task, but I promise you that you must do it because at the end of the day, your second video will be a lot better than your first video. Your fifth video will be a ton better than your second video. And your 50th video will look totally different from your first video because you will learn so much along the way. You'll learn how to be a better content creator and a better engager. And at the same time, you will be growing your channel and growing your audience and growing your friends as well. With my small channel, I have made so many friends through YouTube that I would not have met otherwise. Some of them live in New York, some of them live in Atlanta, and some of them live all the way out in Arizona and California. So what I have to say is don't get on YouTube to just get subscribers. Get on YouTube to make genuine friends. Those first 100 subs you get will mean so much to you and I promise you it will change your whole 
outlook on the whole YouTube process. And at the end of all of this, all I have to say is that just use the law of attraction whenever you are getting started. And basically what the law of attraction is, is that anything that your mind can believe, it can achieve. So anything that you think and anything that you feel like you can get, you can get. You just have to take steps towards that goal in a consistent manner in order to achieve it. But I don't wanna get too deep at the end of this video. I'm gonna save that for some in the future. So if you like this kind of content, just make sure you smash that like button as it really does show YouTube that you appreciate my content. And also if you wanna be so kind, please smash that subscribe button as well until it turns gray, as I really would appreciate you so much for it. But with that being said, that's all I have for you in today's video. I wish you the best of luck if you are thinking about getting started on YouTube in 2021 or you have already gotten started on YouTube in 2020 and looking to get even better into 2021. I really hope you found some kind of value in this video and until next time, peace.